Well, today is uh, the next day here now. It's uh, Thursday, June the 3rd. It's rained all night, and now it's overcast. I fought with this thing for hours last night, trying to get this charge pump housing off. In the service manual, it calls for a puller but I don't have a two-jaw puller. So I've been trying to use my 10-ton porter press right there with this beak and this ram and with either this really heavy paracord that's really strong or this one-inch, one-eighth cable wrapping it around the ports of the fittings or the ports of the housing there. But as soon as I start to put pressure on it, this whole friggin' apparatus cocks and goes sideways and hits me in the face. And I've tried it probably 30 times now. As soon as I start to load it up, it just turns cock sideways and goes and it should already come off with the amount of pressure I put to it but it hasn't even budged and uh, long before I even started to disassemble this thing I had soaked all the joints on the dry shaft and this bearing with preparation to take this apart and then I've been soaking it ever since I started taking it apart and it hasn't moved. You can see the you can see the groove with the retainer. The bearing retainer goes where the heck am I screwed out here? You can see the groove in the shaft right there with it. Where this retainer clip goes. And on the outside of the bearing in the housing is one of these. So that's all out of there. And uh, looking in the parts manual last night again, the kit for rebuilding this comes with the housing and, and the uh, oil seal that's behind the bearing. And it comes with the Lovejoy type rubber it's like a jet love joy con uh, spine connector that's got like a rubber thing i don't know whether this is rubber or whether it's a nylon or what it is but it looks exactly like the center guts out of a love joy coupling star shaped thing that's got like i don't know six fingers or something like that on it and then between each one there's a roller that goes lays in the arch of the each groove and then behind that is another one of these little retainers that holds that the um, holds two plates and one's a uh, the first one on the way in is a uh, is a directional flow plate and depending on the rotation of the shaft, depends which way that plate goes. If it's a clockwise rotation, the letter A that's stamped in the plate faces this, house, faces this housing. If it's a counterclockwise to rotation, the letter A faces inward towards the main pump. And then behind that plate is a flow regulator plate. And that one doesn't matter which way it goes. So that kit comes with those plates, those spider gears and else. But what I was, for $1,400, what I was surprised is it doesn't come with any of these snap rings that go on the outside of this housing. And it doesn't come with this bearing. But it comes with all the guts in forward. And it doesn't, give me a part number for that bearing it gives me a part number for those clips but there's no bearing listed now there's 
in the service manual, there's two different styles. There's one that's got just bushings here in the front. And then there's this style that's got the sealed roller bearing. This is a sealed roller bearing in here. It's a sealed bearing. So I'm going off the sealed bearing one. And there's no listing in the parts manual for it for either the bushing style for the bushings or the bearing and then when you go through all the parts that it says that are in, like it says includes part number one two three or one three four five six and right up to i think 14 but there's a couple of numbers missing in between there that doesn't include and it doesn't include number two, which is this bearing. And uh, in the schematic, it uh, um, for the parts layout, it shows the bearing, but it doesn't show a number for the bearing to refer to the part number, like the one, two, three, like the number two. And it doesn't, but yet it shows the numbers for these clips here. But in the reference of the number four in the parts book for this kit, it does not include, at least it doesn't say that includes these bearings. Now, maybe it's, they're in there, but because the parts list doesn't say that that bearing is included, it's just automatically included and they don't list it because it's, part of this but under the kit part number it lists additional parts that come with it that are also listed in the parts book I'll put a screenshot of the parts diagram as well as a sc screenshot of the uh, service manual page for removing this and it goes into steps and how it comes apart and and further down, I won't include it, but there's further down, there's uh, steps on how it all goes back together. Kind of a funny way, the way it goes back together. Using petroleum jelly and... And then this dry shaft has been soaking. I mean, I guess what made it so hard to get it out is this thing wouldn't collapse. This is supposed to slide in and out of here. There's no grease fitting on there to ever grease it, but I can't remember what year it was I rebuilt this engine at 1700 hours because it was had no power and it was burning oil like crazy and these small engines like I said earlier they're only good for about 1500 hours and uh, this is supposed to slide forward but I had to use two of these and loosen off the engine end to let it slide forward and then the engine is on rubber mounts in order to get this thing to clear that shaft to come off there and when she cleared she made a good bang but anyway last night I tried to uh, use the forklift I put a 3 8 grade 70 chain around this end and a 3 8 and to the frame of the forklift car uh, carrier and then I used a 3 8 grade 70 chain from here up onto the forks. And I pulled slowly on it, pulled and pulled and pulled, and slowly watched for it to move, and it wasn't moving, and I kept tapping the lever to give it a little more pull, a little more pull, and pow! I snapped a 3 8 grade 70 chain. So I rehooked it up, and I tried again. And the same thing happened. And it's been soaking a good five days in, in diesel fuel and ATF oil mixture, which is usually good at eating away a rust. And she won't come apart. So I'm going to have to heat the shit out of it. There's no grease fitting in here, but when I rebuilt this engine, this came apart, and I put never seize on it and everything else. And I should have drilled it and put a grease fitting in it in there but I didn't think it was necessary because there's not much movement 
the only movement in that spline is a little bit of the shaking of the of the engine on the rubber mounts because this axle is mounted solid it doesn't have any suspension so I thought the never seize would be lots but I should have drilled it and put a grease fitting and I don't even know if that would have helped but what bothers me about heating this up is I don't know what this material is in here and I'm a welder and I can't tell what it is it feels like a steel, but then again, it might be a like hard neoprene. I don't know. I just, if I heat it up, I just hope it's not that neoprene because it'll melt. But I don't see any other way of getting it out of I don't see any other way of getting that out of there. Sounds like a dog got hit by electric fence. A <clears throat> neighbor's dog that comes around here all the time. Hit the electric, he run under the wire there, and I guess he had his tail in the air and it got him. Because normally they clear right underneath it. But if their tails are up, they'll hit it. <laughs> My dogs know to keep their tails down, but the neighbor's dog come over here. So, and these are the bolts that hold that housing on. There's one long one, and then the rest of them there. And I found the keyway. You know, I beat the hell out of it. I'm going to have to find a new one because I, I basically obliterated it from beating on it with a chisel trying to get it out. And then I used the air chisel. And hammered the hell out of it with the air chisel to get it out of there. So that's the update on that. And the dog I'm looking after, King, he got into the piglet pen when I was feeding and attacked the piglets. And uh, I wrestled with him to get him out of there. And in the meantime, one got out the door and I didn't notice it. And King there took off after it through the bush. And uh, he wouldn't listen to me, and he was attacking it. And I, the piglet kept running circles around me, and he kept running by me, and I clobbered him with a stick so that he would stop because he wasn't listening. And then Shania slowly worked him up out of that ravine down there, zigzagging behind him. And it just comes to her naturally, being a shepherd. And she slowly worked it back and forth without chasing it, just working it back and forth slowly. It took her about 20 minutes. And she got it up into the yard here, and now it's been hanging around with these girls, which go to slaughter on the 11th. And uh, one side of pork is for sale, and one side is for myself, and the other... Two sides are going to be going to families in need. Like I say, 60% goes to people in need of everything that I raise. There's Mama Cow down there. I don't know where her baby is this morning. Oh, there's her baby over there with the other guys. I don't know if you can see him over there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, he's laying down right there. See the brown calf? The other cows are babysitting while Mama's out grazing. Because <laughs> Mama's all the way down there. The red one, Red Angus down there. But he's up there on the hill with the other heifers and cows. He's, you can see him just this one cow was walking past the flock on them. And that's the cow that lost her calf. It was premature. You can see him laying down there. And I can't catch this little guy. I've set this cage up here with some feed in it because he comes outside the wire here and I feed him here so that these guys don't get his food. 
and I'm hoping that he'll go into the cage here, but so far he's been pushing the cage around from over there. He's scratching his bum on the tree there. And we got some pigeons back this morning. Gonna have to open up the gate to let them go up in the bush up there because it's tall grass up in there. They've mowed this field down and the one behind because it's been really slow coming up. Like, I mean, really slow. Hi, piggy, piggy. Hi, piggy, piggy. Yeah, it's been really slow coming up. Like, that's all the grass we've gotten this spring. Hi, piggy, piggy. She won't come near me, no way. And of course, as fast as it's been coming up, they've been mowing it down because so it's been slow, slow coming, so slow coming because it's been so cold. Like these gnat flies, they just came out last night after a short rain yesterday afternoon. They all must have just hatched because they were attacking me like crazy and they're all around my face here today now. And that's the first we've seen them this year. Because we probably hit 75 degrees yesterday, maybe 78. It's the warmest day we've had. And every night except for the last two nights, we've had heavy frost. Just about every night. The odd night maybe I've missed, but it was cold, but not, not into frost. So the grass has been stunted because of the heavy frost. So it's like... Like there's even not much grass over there. No cows have been over there eating. It's just been really slow coming. And with as many cows as I have, they've mowed this field down. And they've been all down through the bush down there. I haven't opened up this field to them yet. I'm going to put that bull until I can get a pair of castrating pliers to castrate him because he's too big to band and he's too he's a yearling and he's too dangerous to just cut he could bleed to death because he's a yearling already and the farmer that gave him to me <sighs> he was raising heifers and bulls for dairy farmers Been doing work on my truck and and uh, got tools everywhere, <laughs> tools everywhere, and I still have lots of work to do in my truck. Yet I got to do exhaust system, wide pipe, muffler, extension pipe. Work on the forklift. Work on this tractor. I got tools everywhere. So anyway, guys, that's the end of this video. We'll cut it short, and uh, we'll keep fighting with that. I'll have to probably see if I can get a fuller, but it's very hard to get anything because everything is curbside pickup in town. It's been a pain in the butt to get parts for anything because... Uh, everything's curbside. Which means you can't even go and look at the stuff they have on the shelf for polar wise. Okay, everybody have a great day. Uh, remember, there's a GoFundMe. Read my story down there. And uh, there's a PayPal link if you want to help out with uh, feeding people in need. Be much to be appreciated. Take care, everybody. I Shania. Hello, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.